Outstanding. Thank you. Well, it is at the top of the hour. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, so, so my name is Rich Block. I chair our uh, Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group. Uh, this is uh, an ongoing series of special topic meetings uh, that reflect uh, the activities of the COVID-19 virus uh, pandemic. And so we, uh, we as a, a group of uh, global uh, healthcare professionals and technologists are really trying to come together to understand how best we can make use of uh, ourselves as a resource to the, the community uh, at large. Uh, so this is the second of, uh, of, uh, of our uh, series and uh, we have a great sort of lineup today, uh, good agenda. Uh, and thanks for everyone for participating. Thanks also for, their, for your patience. Uh, it's been a very busy few weeks. Um, and in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm handing over to my vice chair, Erica Bierbauer. She's gonna facilitate today's meeting uh, I'll, I'll continue to be on the call, but I want to have Erica sort of get uh, more involved in this to, to take some of the workload off of, uh, off of us because it has been certainly a busy time. So I, I'll hand over to Erica. Erica, thanks for, for helping to make this happen. Thanks, Rich. Thanks for introducing the meeting and um, having me host. Um, and thanks, everyone, for being here this morning. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, just a reminder that the meeting's being recorded. Um, and as we always do, uh, we have the uh, Hyperledger antitrust slide um, and the Linux Foundation uh, antitrust policy, which is here. And you can read over it, um, but basically it's just saying to be a good person. Um, so that is that slide. And then um, is there anyone on the call that's new that would like to uh, introduce themselves to the group? Yeah, good morning. This is uh, Bilal Saleh. I'm not really new. I used to be part of this group, but then I jumped ship to the telecom group. And we recently had a discussion within the group to, to join efforts with you to see if we can help out with the COVID-19 pandemic. And Bilal, where are you located? In Tampa, Florida. Great. And which group is it that, you, um, that you're a part the of? Tele telecom. Oh, the telecom okay. group. Great. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, and my colleague Vipin is supposed to be on this call. I don't know if he joined. He's the chair. Yeah. Hi, hi, Bilal. Hi, everyone. This is Vipin, and uh, I'm a chairperson for High Pleasure Telecom Special Interest Group. And that's what uh, Bilal shared that we are uh, discussing that uh, how we can use uh, uh, like telco use cases uh, regarding privacy with respect to COVID and that's what uh, we want to uh, show that how we can uh, participate as well as in, in other six as well regarding this COVID issue. Wonderful, well, thank you for being here. Hey Erica, this is Brijesh, I'm joining. Everyone. I'm sorry, go ahead. Good morning everyone, my name is Asmai Shakmadi and I'm uh, from Walmart and based out of Bentonville, Arkansas. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Archana Sristi um, from Walmart, based in Bentonville, Arkansas. I have another colleague of mine besides Ashma that joined. Arun, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, all. Um, this is Arun. I'm from um, Walmart, India office. And I also associate with um, Hyperledger India chapter. And we have other participants apart from Walmart, uh, from India chapter as well. And uh, COVID-19 is one of the solutions which we were discussing in our, in our weekly calls as well. And um, if time permits, we'll also have some ideas, discussions shared. Um, well, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us, um, everyone from Walmart. That's, that's great. And where are you guys located? I'm in Arkansas. Arun is in India. Oh, Arizona, Arizona, India. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? Yeah. Hey, uh, this is Brijesh. Uh, we, have, we, we are a startup based out of uh, Bay Area and we are focused on blockchain based healthcare solutions and uh, our solution supports Fabric and other DLT clients like Forum and other things. Okay, uh, wonderful. This is Chris Kelly from Intellect EU here in New York. We are a founding member of Hyperledger and looking to get more information on what we can do to create a blockchain solution around the virus. Perfect. Okay, well, thanks everyone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just- Hi, hey guys, this is Neil. Uh, I'm a developer for Optum slash United Health Group, I'm currently working in Raleigh, North Carolina. 
Uh, just interested in the applications of blockchain to the healthcare space in general, but also obviously COVID as well. Great, wonderful. Anyone else? Hey, Erica. This is, uh, this is Cam Weirich from Ascension. Uh, just interested. I'm new new to Hyperledger, and I just want to, just here to learn. Great. Hi, Cam. Uh, anyone else? Hey, Erica. This is Mike McCoy. I have. Uh, I've, I've, I don't know if I've been on this call in particular before, but uh, I think I did it before uh, talking about my Thomas Jefferson University Blockchain for Healthcare uh, group. But I wanted to join and become more a part of this group. Uh, I'm actually leaving Accenture uh, come on Friday to join the group with Heather Flannery, uh, and I see we have uh, some other people at Consensus Health. So looking to be part of the larger ecosystem more. Yeah, great, Mike. Good to have you. Um, okay, so we have a pretty full agenda. I'm going to go through uh, the community announcements pretty quickly. Um, so Hyperledger has a mentorship program. I'm just going to pull it open here. Um, the most important thing to note here uh, is that the application deadline is April 24th. We're looking for students to participate in this program with 18 projects. And uh, the link is on the agenda, and you can read about it here. Um, and uh, if you want to share any announcements offline, you can always use our Rocket Chat channel or our email listserv. Um, that's just FYI. And without further ado, we'll get on to um, the special topic today of COVID-19. Um, really, we're talking about how, as a global community, we can help manage this pandemic. Um, we've got three different kind of high-level areas here. Um, now, the solutions don't necessarily need to be tied to these three. Um, these are just kind of thumbnails um, about how we can pro slow the progression, um, manage life-saving logistics networks and medical supply chains, uh, and serve um, for more timely and accurate healthcare communications models. Um, now, we are interested in, in using blockchain to help battle COVID-19, but if you have an idea or anyone has an idea that doesn't involve blockchain, that's okay too. Uh, such as a traditional database that could be uh, used to to um, come up with the solutions. We're not. We're trying not to limit ourselves necessarily to blockchain or hyperledger, um, just so that uh, we can kind of open up the scope of of what we're talking about. Um, and so we are very very privileged and excited to have five guest speakers today um, that are going to be talking uh, professionally and from a personal perspective on. Um, how their solutions can help uh, with COVID-19. Um, and so our first uh, guest speaker today is Rajesh Awasti, the founder and CEO of SimBlock. Um, and just so you, you know, he will be presenting at an upcoming um, HC SIG meeting and do kind of a longer presentation. Um, but, for his, but for this, we're limiting these presentations to about five minutes with questions after in order to, to uh, get everyone through in the hour. Um, so, Rajesh, um, are you, would you like to um, share your screen or would you like to just speak? Uh, uh, yeah, I'll just talk about it. I don't have any slides. Okay. So I, I think we'll do a deeper dive presentation around what we are doing and we can show our product as well later on. I think today I just wanted to kind of uh, give a high level overview of what we are doing and in the context of COVID-19, uh, what our platform can do and what we are offering uh, to the different health systems and uh, public health, uh, health organizations. So, uh, as I mentioned, we are a startup focused around looking at how we can leverage uh, decentralized edge technology for healthcare area. I think we have our platform called Block Secure, uh, and basically looking at how we can do decentralized provider directory and credentialing. And there are other things uh, that uh, we are working on uh, for the healthcare user space. But especially in the context of, uh, I think, COVID-19, a decentralized directory and credentialing, I think, makes, uh, uh, I think can be used to kind of accelerate the credentialing and get more of the healthcare volunteers to come in there and help out quickly and across different geographies. So that's where we are offering uh, our platform to various healthcare organizations in U.S. and if anybody is interested uh, in other part of geographies, we are ready to offer that as well. In US, we are partnered with uh, another CV organization to do the actual credentialing and this decentralized credentialing of different healthcare workers can be maintained 
uh, on this platform and easily shared across all different parties. I think just to give you some perspective, I think in New, uh, New York itself, if you see there are about 75 plus thousand healthcare volunteers who have come in there to help. And there are, I think, more than 20,000 out of state healthcare volunteers. So there are a large pool of uh, healthcare volunteers who are coming in there. And we need some way to manage uh, that information about those volunteers, as well as, as I think, uh, uh, the Apex or the uh, need arises from other states, they may be moving around our other healthcare volunteers may come in there. So this kind of decentralized platform makes it easier for uh, all these health systems to manage that volunteer information and uh, uh, reuse it and collaborate uh, in that aspect. So if any of uh, uh, your organizations or you know of, if anybody is interested in using uh, this decentralized system built on uh, Fabric, uh, we are more than happy to offer. So, but just one other thing, we support actually multiple uh, DLT technologies as well. So we support Fabric and Quorum, both of these uh, uh, technologies. And this particular thing that we are offering is uh, part of uh, Fabric. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Again, when we have a deeper dive session, uh, we can go into the details of what all things we have and other things and uh, explain you a little bit more. I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has. Thank you, Brajish. Does anyone have any questions um, about SimBlock and the, what Brajish was discussing? Rajesh, the only thing I, I would mention is something um, I will probably touch on um, in, in my presentation, which is it sounds like your your solution could be uh, could be aligned with um, an initiative that's uh, called the COVID COVID nineteen credentials uh, initiative, and that's being uh, spearheaded by uh, Everynum, uh, which and Street Cred, and then Sovereign behind that. So obviously, I mean, the engine behind it all is Indy. Uh, but that might be something uh, your your enterprise might look into. Oh, okay. Well, what is the name? Uh, it's uh, it's it's on my slide. It's called the COVID nineteen credentials initiative. Oh, okay. okay. It's, it's just kicking off. But oh, okay. Certainly. So yeah, I think it'll be great to work with them because we have a production ready solution that anybody can start using right now. So our credentialing solution, I think it's a full fledged solution, and I think some of you might have. Uh, I've spoken to and they have seen that it's a full end-to-end -end solution. So if anything we can do to that initiative to kind of jumpstart that, I'm more than happy to offer that as well. We have, I think our solution in a way, that's why we are offering it. It's ready to be used uh, by organizations uh, right now. Rajesh, uh, what's the URL for your website? Uh, it's a simblock.com, www.simblock.com. Sim, S-I-M. S-Y-M-B-L-O-C-K. Okay, uh, it's, uh, I think the link is there on the agenda as well, uh, which has included that. So if, you. you can send, send me a mail. Uh, if, I think if you have any uh, questions or any other things there where we can work together. Great. Yeah, if there was ever a time that we needed a good uh, provider credentialing solution, it would be now with everyone coming across state to help out with the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, any other questions for Rajesh before we move on? Okay, great. Um, our next speaker is John Walker, uh, principal at Semantic Clarity. Um, he's going to give a presentation on um, how his solution might serve to coordinate COVID-19 uh, emergency services. Uh, John, do you want me to share your presentation or do you want to take over? Um, you can share it. That's fine. It's, very, it's just a couple of slides. That's great. Can you guys see it? Looks good. Great. So good. So thanks everyone. First, I wanted to, to thank Rich um, and, uh, and Brian Bellendorf, of course, for bringing this topic um, to the group. It's you know obviously timely to, to say the least. Um, if you could go to the, the, sure. the next slide, please. So um, my input is, is really based on um, the first meeting uh, we had, the first special topic meeting we had uh, back in March 20th, uh, and it's been a very tumultuous two weeks, but uh, in that time, I really just wanted to, to ponder on um, how can we, you know, what's a practical 
implementation of DLT and DID technologies, DLT being obviously fabric uh, sawtooth, the DIDs, the uh, ARIES and INDI initiatives um, to help fight uh, COVID-19 and support those who are fighting COVID-19. And so my, uh, the use case I kind of tried to get my head around was how could we help um, emergency services and kind of field in place uh, workers to uh, have their resources aligned and uh, you know align those resources, identify those resources, align them with the demand, and provide simplified reporting. It certainly seems, at least here in the U.S., that um, you know that that type of coordination does not exist, and so these resource um, service providers are scrambling. So I, it seemed, the answer, my answer in my mind was yes, we can do this. Um, the technologies are there. Um, for myself, um, my first question was, well, how would I, you know, how can I coordinate and reach out to people um, to find out if that, you know, even if there's a need for this, how can you get involved without getting in the way? And I think um, I'm still, I'm just putting that out to the group um, to say, you know, if there are people who know of organizations that could use um, these technologies or should use these technologies, let's you know start a project to get in touch with them once we do that uh, i think it's really it's you know it's a matter of building a pretty um straightforward use case right the kind of the block and tackle projects i'm sure many of us all already do um so that's you know really on the 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 demand side or the industry side on the platform capabilities it seems clear that um uh, did you know safe intermediate identities um as supported by Aries and Indy are a very good um, platform for providing safe and quick intermediate credentialing as we, you know, Rajesh was talking about and I'm sure we have several other people who uh, have offerings in that area. So I think that the keys there are getting aligned with the right um, people and getting the use cases correct, right? So you can identify issuers and verifiers and then get a schema that actually reflects the need today. Um, as we've talked about, the application tier would, you know, to support something like this would need a, I think just a, a simple or as simple as possible inventory uh, solution, you know, which is, is easy to say and can be hard to do, but something simple to support people in the field uh, to identify again, individuals, their resources and some geocoding behind where, where those things come together. Uh, and then finally, the third component is um, a, a safe uh, persistence layer and ledgering, distributed ledger, so that all parties can see both demand and uh, delivery for transactions and provide uh, oversight uh, visibility into what's going on. So that's kind of just tried to put out the, the rough outline of how to solve this problem, which again, I think, Many folks on this call, you know, we all address problems like this all the time, but the timeliness of this and the scope of this are, are the challenge. Uh, so next slide. So I just you know, put together a visual on what something like this might look like. Um, and again, you've got a, you know, a distributed app that would leverage uh, identity credentials um, from Aries being the, the front end uh, to uh, identity uh, blockchain. And the, the actors in that would be the, your uh, support providers, any oversight or governmental resources, as well as on the actual resource supply side, identifying the uh, location and itemization or inventory control, right, for, for resources. So those, um, I think providing a, an application, which I just called a map and match app um, that could uh, basically coordinate with Aries on the identity side and then use some, you know, again, existing kind of barcode or QR code identification to uh, do inventory management where you could basically bring consumers who've been, who identify themselves to uh, a resource and the providers on the, on the other side of that. And then your map and match app would um, 
you know, would be the, the middle tier that brings them together. Um, the, the net reporting coming out of this could be obviously there's some kind of you need persistence for the middle tier, but ultimately you could use, obviously you could use a DLT. I think it'd be the best case to use a DLT uh, to record uh, verified transactions and demand. And then so all parties uh, could oversee, you know, could dig into that dashboard, do whatever you need to do. So that was really, again, just, I tried to, for myself, create a conceptualization, you know, that people could uh, build a use case around and, um, you know, drive forward, leverage, again, existing technologies that are already out there. Any, any obviously, there's a lot of devil <laughs> in the details as, as, again, I'm sure most folks realize, but I think creating uh, some kind of a, uh, an MVP that could be aligned with short-term needs is uh, is super important in this in this situation. Next slide. And then finally, there, there's kind of a uh, recognizing that um, there's a, a lot there's a rush of, for a lot of good people um, and a lot of good products to be involved in this initiative. So I think coordinating uh, is is also super important. So people aren't duplicating effort and stepping on each other uh, and kind of also getting in the way of the people who are just trying to solve this problem. Um, so an example that I bumped, bumped into was this COVID-19 credentials initiative. It is uh, sponsored by uh, Everynum and I'd uh, recommend or ask folks to go in and check it out. It, I think it really just launched yesterday. Um, it's got you know a number of the um, the players who, who work with Indian Aries already involved. And uh, the other resource I wanted to, to point out was, of course, the, um, the dashboard page um, that we have up, that Brian put up uh, for Hyperledger for, to collect uh, projects. And so um, just on a personal note, I uh, joined the initiative yesterday and volunteered to work on the coordination and communication track which I would hope I could uh, bring information back uh, to this group uh, and get alignment there if, uh, if there are, are projects people want to pursue from, from our group, um, as well as just you know, report out on what's going on. And that's really it. My, my next steps are to uh, personally to uh, explore uh, the, some of the funding capabilities that uh, again have been are on our uh, the healthcare SIG page and see if um, those might get aligned with, again, this, this type of solution. Um, again, a simple MVP kind of approach uh, to delivering something in the next, you know, maybe in the next 90 days, which is you know, very challenging. And that's it. It's really just kind of my personal uh, thoughts on this. Uh, John, Jim Mason, can I ask a question? Looking at your slide, it's, if I've got it right, the, the application you're proposing is, I'll quote, a resource matching with demand. It's matching resources and demand. Is that right? That's correct. I mean, the, um, it do, wouldn't have to. The, the solution could be just, you know, identifying. You could take the um, supply side, if you will, and say, okay, so where are, you know, um, field, field deployed testing locations? And what is their capacity, right? Who, I mean, what's there? Or, you know, for food banks, and we don't know how this may progress, you know, not right. in this country, but, but all over the world. Where, so, you know, where are resources mm -hmm. and how do you, you know, where are they and how much of them are there? The best case scenario is obviously to match that, right, to the demand. So you don't create situations where, you know, field uh, deployments are being overrun, right? Because they're, you know, things are unmanageable. But that may not always be the case, depending on the on the situation. Right. Um, so when I look at, uh, there's an application conceptually here that has several parts to it, which is fine. Separate from that, um, if you look at just the resource piece on the upper left there, mm -hmm. um, resources exist for all these things, obviously. And exactly. what you're trying to do is say, how do we get access to those? So beyond the application, the first thing that comes to mind for me is it's also about trying to identify the right data sources where these resources already exist and find a way to bring those in, probably on a, I'll call it an ongoing basis so that you can, uh, I'll call it tap 
capacity, if you will. So if capacity goes up or down or, or supply goes up or down from the resources that you've brought into the network, in effect, you can at any point in time see what that is. But that, to me, is a problem of trying to tap into existing data sources somehow. That, that's a huge thing, I think, as, as part of this. Absolutely. And, and as I you know, thought about this, that's really where I, I thought, well, the first place is to identify who are the providers, right? Who might be, the, you know, who are, who are people who would be doing, you know, field uh, implementations of testing or food banks or just, you know, try to identify people where there are field deployments and talk to them about really building an actual use case, right? I mean, what are their inventory capabilities and how many people do they have? So that was really the first, the first step. I completely agree with you is, is not only just tapping into existing data flows, but getting aligned with the people who provide those services, right? And make sure that without stepping on, you know, getting in the way of their operation, how can they be supported? Yeah. Yeah, so it's an like, interesting idea to provide, a, it's sort of like a directory of directories in my mind, if you will, that tracks, I'll call it capacity, if you will, in a real time model. Right, and it's useful for sure it, it to provide that what I call centralized, like a sort of a nine one one service or four one one kind of a thing, uh, to say if you go here, you can probably tap into you know whatever, hopefully seventy eighty percent of the capacity or whatever the resources that you're looking for to see where it really exists at a point in time, and, right. and, and that is very important. So I'll just speaking from experience with people that are getting hit with this, a lot of times you can't get a test in one location, but if you knew that there was another location available, you could get a test somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? So those are the kind of things that um, this kind of a system would make possible, for sure. So it definitely, it definitely has value, let's put it that way, for sure. But the question is, how do you come up with it quickly? And number one and number two, how do you leverage the existing data sources on a, I'll call it a real-time basis? Exactly. No, there's, I'm sure in, you know, the, um, the, our participants from Walmart, which you know, I mean, this is kind of just in time, just in time supply chain in, in some senses, and that that is not yeah. you know, trivial <laughs> at all, if even feasible. But there might be some, again, a simple way to at least support field deployed um, service providers where the inventory may not be that huge, right? You're not, and again, under the key is getting the use case right and coordinating with those, the entities, those service providers, to make sure you, you don't get in the way. Yep, sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, John. Um, that, that's really interesting, especially now with um, a lot of our emergency services uh, becoming more remote. Um, it seems like that would be a really good idea to manage the inventory of those resources. Um, thank you so much for that, for that presentation. That was very interesting. Um, our next speaker um, is going to be Anusu Machoko, CEO and uh, co-founder of Meta Digital. Uh, Anusu, Anusu, do you would you like to take over or share any slides? Uh, is Anusu on the call today um, to present? And I'm not seeing an issue on the call, so we may have lost him. Oh, was he on the call earlier? Do you know or? Uh, I don't recall, but I think we should move on to Jayakar and then we'll see if Anisha joins us later. Perfect. Okay, next, next we have Jayakar Johnson-Joseph, principal of Johnson's Medicom. Um, I know Jayakar has um, some slides here. Jayakar, do you want me to pull them up or would you like to take over? Yeah, next morning. Good afternoon, good evening, that's it. Uh, can I see the slides? Um, I can pull them up if you like. Uh, can I see my slides? Oh, yeah. did you, did you, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th the thing is, is uh, the biggest problem in uh, that, let's see, uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic is that uh, the it, it is highly mute mutating that is this virus is an rna virus and uh, positively sensing so always it is changing so there's a big problem in uh, see unless you control that mutation so this type of pandemic will repeat and uh, that is it will go in a very 
discuss one of so what we uh, plan to have is that is a the perfect medical record that it should not be duplicated must be that so in that way that see whole the project was uh, this program was uh, assigned next can i have the next slide uh, yeah that is this mutation is a biggest problem so that see here that this uh, uh, coronavirus is uh, there is a that mutation incidence itself is very high that the incidence is one is to one so each virus can mutate into an another uh, type where vari variation can happen so there is a antigenic drift and antigenic uh, shift that antigenic drift means that is a uh, the immunity when once when a person is getting in infected they, that immunity they acquired it will be lost for the next mutant the uh, uh, virus so that just like a cold so another thing is that the very dangerous thing is uh, uh, that uh, uh, this uh, uh, antigenic shift so it can mutate with an another type of virus and make a new virus so that is very dangerous in that so that's why that this program was uh, um, we proposed next slide please yeah. so here so what the thing is you see that uh, policy regulators uh, that is united nations university that is a untl that's a lab and that is the who see all these that organization need a proper data feedback from the medical records of that uh, uh, infected uh, virus patient because so because that patient that the mutation is very frequent always it has to be that the policy itself has to be uh, revised as well as it has to be focused in in which area it is mutating because there is a lot of radiation issues everything is involved on this mutation so they have to geographically they have to pin pin out where it is starting and immediate measures what has to be um, that see uh, collaborative measures has to be taken the all these things has to be uh, uh, that work out so uh, that's why that demographic and the geographic distribution of the infected case uh, and the change of nature of the disease is uh, is the most priority to focus the research objectives to develop that see uh, that new new that see uh what is called um, there is there is a molecular level there is a lot of research is going on to co compete with that uh, um, infection it is not just like we cannot uh, see uh, that prevent by that see uh, immune that is vaccine because vaccine won't work out in this uh, uh, type of virus uh, so that is a so what we propose is it has to be centralized by that see that see according to the protocol of that see united nation only that all this uh, every nation has to act if, if each one ha will have a different different type of scenario we will last then see there is lot of uh, uh, coordinated effect to fight with this will be lost so can i have the next slide so over. sorry about that um <laughs> uh, i'll get back to you yeah yeah all uh, right so this is the flow data that is said how that data flow is has to be from that uh, the cluster of data that can be captured from the medical records of uh, that is a and that village level town level and uh, that's a district level something just like that and it has to be uh, forwarded to that uh, united nations laboratory and because there is a organizations they are working on that biomolecules also that there is no regulation now that is because so there is lot of publication is contradictory to each other there is a so it has to be regulated in a particular way then only that is treatment and prevention also will work out in a particular uh, direction 
and that is here. Another thing that is here that important is we have to, we must have the global that the observatory uh, that has to that is observe that the cosmic radio <laughs> radiation pattern in that the high energy radiation pattern in the, throughout the globe. That uh, uh, and also that is a distribution of uh, that is a uh, that is radioactive the uh, matter and that you see uh, technically enhance that radioactive matters that that distribution also has to be monitored throughout the surface of the globe because what they feel is that is a when when there is a substance there's maybe a small that's a minute radiation sub radiating substance in the table if the if, if the um, uh, virus stick on that it will immediately get to into uh, mutated to another thing next slide please so right though. so uh, uh, another thing that what i want to in, uh, emphasize is that is a uh, the doctors along with that that see the consultant along with that epidemiologist they have to work for this project so then it has to be uh, that the data has to be uh, uh, with an uh, uh, provisional provisional or unique uh, medical record because unique medical record so far it is not available see the, so now we can start as a see the provisionally unique medical record then it can be merged to that uh, uh, that is a unique medical record so so that uh, see that review of the patient and that clinical manifestation if they if the patient gets a second time in say infection how that um, that uh, that virus changes any urgent <coughs> necessity to be, uh, to be taken everything can be monitored so for all these things that the data security is the most important thing unless we operate through hyperledger see there will be a lot of chaos there is there is one data which it is corrupted that everything will go in a wrong direction so because it it connects with a lot of um, see research organization they are bringing out with the vaccine that the, the serum test and everything uh, not that the vaccine vaccine is not going to be that but some other <laughs> modalities all these things has to be taken care of can i have the next one yeah so this is the urgent thing what we have to globally we have to uh, establish so that there's a regional native cloud server that is a, uh, with hyperledger program so that will uh, see the uh, uh, capture data from that your mother electronic medical record either it's a real time medical record or the existing record so it will capture that that one so <coughs> this will be sent to that ibm cloud that see uh, that they are having some security provision also that is uh, along with that hyperledger then see when it <coughs> it has to reach that uh, who un and all that so this is the thing that see in that it sector has to be focused that will throw the international to uh, organization that see it is not going to be costly for, for uh, that see low configuration that uh, uh, that is a regional native cloud server that see but see, that that must be <laughs> that that is needed to connect that this data to the whole uh, global uh, uh, data pipeline uh, that is the thing urgently needed so uh, next slide please uh, so what I what we <laughs> uh, recommend is that is a uh, so that is a first that is see unless somebody recommend that is see this United Nations are because they see there is lot of consensus we have to consensus algorithm we have to develop along with the two various departments of UN so that has to be promoted from the hyperledger community that is unless the pro uh, hyperledger community promote this project to en they they will be isolated they won't um, um, they will take in their own way of uh, um, that uh, implementing this uh, 
projects. So, uh, so what I feel is that is a, so we have to uh, promote that is certain principles that is a hyperledger can resolve that is in that the data security uh, that is a, and that is a uh, effective uh, transaction of the data. Everything can be in a secure manner. Everything will be <coughs> by hyperledger only is possible. That has to be um, um, uh, um, uh, that is a promoted to the United Nations to get the consensus algorithm to define a consensus algorithm with the many of the uh, um, agencies of uh, WHO. So that includes that is the uh, that that the international um, uh, telecom union uh, that is a, a WHO that Linux Foundation I think is um, already working with that Harvard uh, lab collaboration because that, that how they are working on that how that the uh, database and uh, this uh, uh, hyperledger can be um, uh, collaboratively do it that the uh, that secured uh, operation by that is the uh, world line and everything. So that is a um, so that is the um, that has to be collaborated. Then that is the I think that is IBM is having a very good uh, uh, networking that is the uh, that is the deploying that is the, <laughs> that is. Um, that is the foundational level uh, architecture. Then that is other uh, um, cloud um, providers can uh, work on that, that build up that uh, further application uh, project. Then uh, so so consensus we have to work out with the universities how the consensus has to be developed and that the the which are all that nations will cooperate for that which are all that. Uh, international organizations will cooperate and the labs will cooperate. So everything has to be worked out for that because that consensus algorithm development is the most important thing. What I feel is uh, uh, to move, um, move to the next level. The next to that, uh, that uh, installing that uh, um, the cloud server in all uh, uh, villages, towns, and then the city, districts, and county, everything. So Another thing that is see that education itself has to be little that uh, has to be all the universities has to be concentrated on that see uh, partly uh, real time. We cannot uh, have everything that is the uh, online courses that we have to make it that uh, partly on time courses and uh, that is a and focus on more uh, uh, that is a production of the healthcare. Uh, uh, professionals because that is the I am speaking from that uh, India. India is, is one of the uh, place there is a doctors uh, patient ratio is very worse. That is the that health workers also is not uh, adequate. So uh, that is uh, the in future because of this COVID uh, problem. Uh, the whole professionally we have to boost that uh, medical profession then then only that see the unless the health is developed to that uh, community that is a other professions that is existence is very um, uh, that they will have a lot of constraints so so that this has to be um, that is a boosted up that's a, for this uh, one of the suggestion from me is that uh, epidemiology graduation has to be <laughs> graduates has to be uh, work in parallel with the healthcare consultants. For that, all these universities have to be that be motivated. That is only possible with the United Nations University. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we we are already working on that unique medical record um, that is managing with hyperledger data security. That that is an architecture level so we plan to have this that is merging this one to that one uh, for a permanent other healthcare problems of to solve that one. Uh, so for that that is a healthcare smart card adaptation program that that will have that is a, uh, a latency that will reduce the latency period to reduce that is a, to access a unique medical record 
so for that emergency and all so the card will work out that is every time it will get updated their uh, code that is the uh, id uh, that that we have a separate uh, this one uh, so on that the in the, the on the top of that this we we, have, we plan to develop that healthcare real time healthcare um, system that that includes a lot of uh, iot device and uh, i think that's oh, next time this next one uh, that is yeah uh, thank you uh, that is see uh, there's a uh, i think that see it, 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 there is there is lot of collaboration is needed a lot of who are interested uh, in healthcare uh, they can uh, they can develop independently and uh, integrate with this project and uh, so that will be much useful i think that it will be useful for the patient thank hey, you hey aikar are you from uh, healthcare uh, yeah basically i'm a surgeon uh, the, that i was doing that uh, um, real time healthcare uh, the, the research in uh, about 30 years uh, now i am 66 <laughs> right uh, excellent right. well thank you jaikar i i'm just sensitive to time erica uh, we do okay. want to move on to to vipin We may want to hold questions until after Vipin's uh, presentation, and then we can just yeah. maybe loop back around. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you, Jayakar. That was in very interesting. Um, next, we have Vipin Rathi, uh, assistant professor at the University of Delhi and chair of the Hyperledger Telecom Special Interest Group. Um, it's going to give us some view from outside the healthcare industry. Uh, Vipin. Yeah. Thanks, Rika. Uh, so. I want to quickly introduce what uh, we are doing in telecom special interest group with respect to privacy issues. Uh, so, so we can broadly divide how massive invasion of privacy because of uh, actions taken by government and by companies in COVID times. For example, you can see that how phone data collection by using uh, location tools and facial recognition with respect to if you see all these things with respect to quarantine. So, uh, so what we are doing is like uh, we are collecting some. Uh, data like how different governments and companies are looking into this and that's what i want to share right now so government is following different methods for example hong kong government is using a wrist ban and app but uh, but but the question arises what happen if user delete the app so in that in during during quarantine period so department of health and police takes some actions uh, with respect to these things but but users are free to delete the app after 14 days but uh, different governments for example israel's approach is like uh, tracking people uh, in is essential to save life whereas thai authorities say that okay we are collecting some data and tracking some uh, something through app but you we will delete uh, voluntarily within 14 days and uh, if you see companies for example google uh, so we know that the google use traffic patterns in google maps right uh, where we can see if there's a jam or not uh, so they're using anonymized location data and uh, that's what they are saying that they, they that's what they are offering that uh, you can, we can use same kind of anonymized location data with respect to social distancing so 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 what we did is we divide everything in two parts for example uh, quarantine and social distancing so quarantine tracking is more uh, more focused by the like more focus area for the government and if you see social distancing is what we are different companies are working on for example facebook also published this uh, map tracking the movement of its users in response to covid and uh, there's a one interesting uh, company called unicast uh, unicast is uh, is is using location tools uh, for for measuring the social distancing also we have uh, evernim also working on this that uh, covid threats that's what they are uh, working on and uh, and uh, you can find a paper as well on it there is singapore government using some bluetooth technology by using the phone and random hash uh, and same way russia is using a facial recognition and uh, to the so the to check if people break quarantine or not right so so if you see that the different federal governments are working in a different ways so 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 if you see that italy is saying that uh, because of uh, privacy stuff do it uh, like uh, they they are they are urging employers against uh, a uh, do it yourself approach to collect the data right but that's what we are doing in telecom sake is like we are looking in how how this um, how how we can use this imdb is like a, like every phone has a as a 
is a EME number with it. So that's what we are doing in our telecom site that we are putting our GSMA EME DB uh, data to the blockchain so that in the future as well, uh, we can uh, give PID numbers to IoT devices and mobile devices so that if see, this kind of privacy invasion will not take place in the future in such situations. So yes, I know it's a uh, very less time uh, left. So uh, I'm open for the question, and if you lo if you want more details, you can join our telecom tech as well. We are uh, discussing more on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vipin. Um, does anyone have any questions? Wonderful. Um, so I just wanted to go over uh, really quick, uh, show show everyone that there's we have an update on funding here. Um, first, starting with some international funding. I'm not going to go through it just in the interest of time, but it is here if you want to take a look. Um, part of the group is to let everyone know what the funding is for people working on projects. Um, also here we have um, the U.S. status and funding. Um, the, this first one that I think we brought up in the last meeting is now closed. Uh, so that one is, is no longer available. It's been filled. Um, and then we have the NCI, we have an NIH opportunity, and then UC Davis um, has a list of funding opportunities, uh, kind, of a, kind of a resource to find out what funding is available. Um, so those, are th those opportunities are available uh, for anyone that is interested. You can click here and find out more. Um, we have about nine minutes. Does anyone else want to uh, say anything? Or um, I think the Walmart folks maybe wanted to uh, talk a little bit about, about what they're up to. Hi, Erica. So this is Rich. So I, I'm going to um, just sort of see if we can maybe get uh, Heather from Consensus to maybe give us a little bit of a, a, a brief sort of summary of the work that they're doing. I know we're planning to have them speak uh, a little bit more formally at our next uh, special topic meeting, which will be in two weeks. But uh, Heather, did you have a, a little bit of time to, to, to sort of uh, talk? Oh, uh, thank you. I, I was not anticipating that, that during this session, but, uh, but I appreciate it very much. Uh, hey, everyone. This is Heather Flannery. I'm the CEO of Consensus Health. Nice to speak with you all. We, uh, we are working on um, a couple of different collaborations. Uh, one of them is a hackathon that we are, we're approaching in, in some unique ways. And uh, uh, Brian Bellendorf has very kindly agreed to be one of the judges of the hackathon. And we are, we are seeking to activate and assemble healthcare and life sciences mentors to be paired with three different open source communities that will be uh, coming together for the first time. And the notion is that the, the domain experts combined with a set of software engineering experts working with a particular, a particular tool set uh, will be, uh, will be co-creating uh, technical assets that can be adopted and put in market, which is consensus health's intention. Uh, with the with the winning the winning assets, and uh, we're we're intending to have the hackathon activate the global Ethereum open source development community, which is about two hundred and eighty five thousand engineers uh, globally. We want to see that community come in full into the Hyperledger Bezu community. Uh, which it has not really happened to date, and we see that as a, a really great a really great opportunity to expand um, that portion of the hyperledger world where there's a you know there's a huge number of technologists that haven't yet started to engage on Bezu even though they already work on ethereum on other ethereum clients so uh, we're also bringing in the open mind community, which is uh, focused on privacy preserving machine learning. Uh, and is a close partner, uh, close partner uh, of the of the open source uh, initiative, and we're looking at convergence opportunities of advanced privacy preservation, zero knowledge cryptography, verifiable compute, with um, federated machine learning and other other privacy preserving machine learning tactics, uh, uh, working with uh, Hyperledger Bezu. And we also have a very particular focus on Hyperledger Avalon as well in, in parallel. Uh, we're also uh, looking at uh, emphasizing baseline protocol, which is a, another 
new open source initiative underway and seeking to explore opportunities to develop open source standards as the through IEEE particularly as a mechanism to drive interoperability such that consensus health and our partners are building uh, building on an Ethereum stack, but in parallel, we're working to drive living standards that can be implemented on a range of different uh, different technology stacks, roughly in parallel, uh, instead of you know on a delay of two or three years. So some of the um, we are we are recruiting what we're calling mentors. The mentors are not intended to be technologists. They're intended to be healthcare and life sciences domain experts that are paired with software engineers from these three open source communities. And uh, we are beginning the recruitment of mentors uh, today, tomorrow. There's going to be a press release about the hackathon coming out very soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'll, 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 stop, I'll stop there. Um, and invite any of my consensus health colleagues uh, on the line if if you'd like to provide any other quick commentary. Um, I will I will provide the call for mentors in the chat here in just one second. And if any of my colleagues have any remarks or or Brian, I would invite you as well since you will be a judge. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, great, great to hear about that. And maybe we can also get that out to the listserv um, so that after the meeting, there's access to that uh, that program. And this um, is uh, Jonathan. Uh, it's uh, Jonathan Holt. I'm the CMIO for Consensus Health. And just to follow on to what Heather had mentioned, I think one thing that is still sort of troubling me with um, is this like this need for standards and uh, to sort of channel Brian is that the need for both a minimal viable governance model but also this minimal viable semantics, especially across different languages. And I think, uh, so I'm, I'm a advisor to the ABMS, the American Board of Medical Specialties, and we've been thinking a lot about how to interoperate. There's about 70 different medical boards in the United States, uh, some just for physicians, I should mention. And it's the, so the semantics of representing licensure in each of those uh, states is different. So actually trying to get to a common data model uh, quickly is gonna be challenging, but that's, we're up for it. Perfect, thank you, Jonathan. And Rich is gonna go ahead and close out this call as we're three minutes from the top of the hour. Um, thank you, Rich. Uh, uh, sorry, Rich, this is Bilal. Can I make just a, a quick uh, comment here? Sure, yeah, uh, quickly. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, there is a, a European initiative that was I was invited to join. Uh, currently, their name is Corona Chain, but it's gonna change. The purpose is to establish an open source uh, platform for uh, healthcare providers to enter coronavirus specific data. So they crowdsource all the data from around the globe, organize it, put it in a certain ontology and offer it to those institutions. Uh, the plan is to put it on Hyperledger. It's gonna be an open source. And in the future, they're gonna do some analytics and machine learning on top of the ontology. If anybody interested in learning more, please, uh, I will put my email address on the chat. Thank you. Thanks for that, Bilal. And in fact, yeah, I would say if, if you want to get it out on Listserv, we can get it out to membership uh, with additional details, as well as our Rocket Chat channel uh, at, at Healthcare SIG. That would be fanta fantastic. Thanks, Bilal. Sure. So we are just, uh, just a minute away from the top of the hour. I just wanted to uh, say a special thanks to our, our guest speakers uh, for this hour. Uh, thank you to Prajesh. John, uh, Jayakar, and Vipin, uh, and we're going to reschedule an issue for our, our next cycle for this special uh, event, uh, and that is going to be in two weeks. Uh, our meetings are every other week, every other Friday, so we'll be uh, convening, reconvening in the same format as a special, uh, special events meeting uh, in two weeks, which is uh, April 17th uh, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and again, thanks everyone for your participation. Please make use of our listserv uh, and let's keep communication uh, at a very high level uh, for this very, very important time. Thank you so much and please be safe. Thank you.